what I would like to talk about in this uh, uh, little lesson is the F chord and why might you need to learn the F chord and is barring it the only way to play the F chord? Uh, a little bit about me, I'm Ricky Comiskey, I'm a guitar teacher, I've been a guitar teacher for pr just over 30 years, plugging away, trying to help everybody I can to learn how to play the guitar because it's the most amazing thing when you learn how to play guitar. Um, it just adds something extra to your life uh, and it's a great tool of solace and comfort. But what we want to do is we want to make the guitar as easy as possible. Now, the traditional uh, conventional uh, approach to uh, the F chord is to play it as a bar chord. And bar chords are notoriously difficult. Um, they don't need to be difficult uh, because uh, conventional wisdom doesn't take into account how hands work really uh, so what we have what we have to do is we have to rely on some more unconventional wisdom uh, to kind of get to the core of how to play this pesky f chord if any of you guys are out there and you already play a c chord yeah then you already are halfway to be able to make an F chord. And what I'll do is I'll show you the simple way to get an F chord. I'm going to put my C chord on here. I've got my first finger on the first fret of the B string. I've got my second finger on the second fret of the, the D string. And I've got my third finger on the third fret of the uh, A string. And that gives me this diagonal shape. You can see it, it goes across the strings in this manner, cuts through in a diagonal shape. Now, the easiest way to make the F chord is to, uh, to not bar it. And the thing is, the, uh, the ped pedantic people out there will say, that, well, that isn't really a true F chord. But the thing is, if it's about serving the song so you can sing and you can pitch, your voice off it or it will still come out as an f chord notice this third finger in the other facebook live i did i talked about where you place your fingers in the frets to get the optimal sweet spot sound out i did this third finger in the middle fret now what i could do is i could place that right up next to the fret wire but then that means that there is no room underneath for my little finger to go in and sit, get seated underneath there. And this is how we're gonna get to that C chord. So the first finger, notice my first finger's in the sweet spot. Look at my second finger, it's pretty much in the sweet spot. My third finger, however, that is in the five out of 10 spot. That's in the, uh, in the middle. It's right next to the dot. So you can see the dot on the fretboard there. That's what's going there. And what that essentially does is it allows me to reserve some space for my little finger to go there. Now, what that does, what that means is that if I play, um, I've got some volume here. If I play those inside four strings, I'm playing the E, uh, sorry, I'm playing the A, I'm playing the A string, the D string, the G string, and the B string. strings there now when I put that little finger on there what essentially happens is I get this chord called a C sus4 we're not going to concern ourselves with chord names what we're more interested in is getting the hand shapes and getting your hands to do as they're told All right so we've got this C shape we put the little finger on Sound is a, is a sus4. Sus stands for suspended fourth. So you can hear there, it's already changing the quality of that C chord, but it's not quite an F yet. Right? So then what we do is if I move this second finger down one string, yeah, so I'm going from north to south, down one string. So from the second fret of the D string, I move down to the second fret of the G string. What happens is then inside those four strings, the A, the D, the G, and the B string, 
string, I get an F chord. Now that theoretically isn't a isn't an F chord. It's an F slash C. We're not going to concern ourselves with the name, but essentially at its heart, it's an F chord. Now the reason that's important is because the F chord uh, comes up in the key of C major. All right? And if I count the, the, the chords that you might encounter in a song that is in the key of C, F is going to be probably in that mix there. So C and F are very, very close relative chords. They work with each other all the time. The chords, let me just say this, I don't, I don't know where everybody's coming from. The chords in the key of C are C major, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, and B diminished. We're not concerning ourselves with chords like diminished chords or anything like that yet. So in that, we have seven chords, seven chords in a key. Um, and what we really need to be able to do is play, you know, through, through all of those chords. And they all work in different combinations, and that's the foundation of chord progressions and songs. So what we might do is we might have a chord progression that, say, goes C, F, and I'm going to do this F as a bar chord, and then G. Well, what happens there is that the C, F, G, that involves a lot, a ton of hand movement, yeah? When we play guitar, we want to learn about economy of movement and build efficiency in there. If you can build efficiency in there, then your chord changes become cleaner and quicker. So here's the thing with this change. C to the F bar chord. There's a lot of movement between that. And then shifting to the G, there's a lot of movement there. And I go back to that C again. Now, if you utilize this method that I just showed you before, where you change the C to the F by putting that little finger on, moving the second finger down, getting that F, then what you can do is you can take this chord, this shape, and we can slide it up using the grooves that we've created in your fingertips. If you look at your fingertips, yeah, the, when you hold down the strings, you create these grooves. Now, if you take your hand off, you're not utilizing those grooves that you've, that you've painfully, literally painfully created in the beginning of your guitar journey. So what we want to do is take that shape and we want to move it up two frets. And that gives us a G chord. Because if you think about it, in the alphabet, what comes, what comes after F? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So this shape is a movable shape. Notice I'm not playing an E string, a thick E string, and I'm not playing my thin E string. I've got to not hit those. If I do hit those, then I'll get something else. I'll get still pretty. Uh, this added E turns that chord into an F major 7, which we're not really wanting to put that colour in there because it's a little bit, uh, it, it says a bit too much emotionally. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. If you can get this shape, and this is, this is how I would suggest you, you tr travel and manage your way to getting the F chord. If you can do this by coming from the C chord, which is relatively easy, um, then what you might be able to do then is take your index finger and then lay that flat across the B and the E string. I might have to modify my hand angle just a little bit. And you can see that my finger isn't straight up like that. It's tilted at an angle like that. So if I've got my F on there, what I'm now doing is, as I'm including, including the thin E string. That is an F. That's the root note of the chord. The root note 
is the note that gives the chord its name. So if it's an F chord, it has a root note of F. If it's a G chord, the root note is G. If it's a B minor chord, the root note is B. Yeah, so uh, uh, keep on going with, uh, with all those things there. If you're Ill, unsure of any of that, have a route around the videos on my YouTube uh, channel. Uh, uh, I do uh, a thing about musical alphabet and sharps and flats and all those cool things that you need to know just to fill the gaps in there because the, ultimately, you know, there, there will be gaps. Yeah, especially if you, you're trying to learn everything off, uh, off YouTube because there's so much information out there, like I said. So here, just to recap, we take the C chord, and then we put the little finger on, second finger down. We can lay that first finger flat. And that now gives me this right sounding chord. Now, I happen to be one of those people who have small, stumpy fingers. It's not a handicap. It doesn't mean that you can't play guitar if your hands are small. It's a benefit if you have bigger fingers. If you have longer fingers, then you can access the fretboard in ways that are, you know, uh, um, more desirable. Which brings me to this idea here. Now, the idea with the bar chord is that you put this first finger all the way across there. Now, carrying on from this idea here, what you could do if you have a big enough thumb is you can wrap your thumb around here on the first fret right up next to the fret wire so that you get a good sound yeah and then what you can do is you can play that now my hands like i say stumpy fingers here um they they struggle a little bit with that there are times when i can get it but it's it's not something that i feel absolutely comfortable with and you know there's a lot of things as you play guitar you are not going to feel comfortable with but that is okay right so we get this f right we put we can put that thumb over the top there is a, an account of you know lots of great guitar greats that put the thumb over the top and it's acceptable it's acceptable, it's allowed, it's permissible. Because remember what I said in the first video, there is no authority on guitar, yeah? There is no authority on guitar. It's just opinion and what works for your hands. Now, if I take this third finger and substitute it here, and I put it down here instead, I leave my little finger free, you can see I can actually hold that F chord like this. Now, this is a true F. Uh, uh, but it's a partial bar, yeah, and it's on four strings. And what it does is, it, because it's on four of the higher strings, it doesn't sound as rich and full-bodied as a bar chord F. So there's the bar chord F there. So if I put this one, you can hear it's a little bit thinner. Because it's four strings, yeah, it's still, it's still valid as a chord. Uh, but you've got to be aware of the, the kind of the, the texture uh, moving from, say, a strict six string chord. Big. Sounds thinner. There's not as much weight on that chord there. It's a big chord. Thinner, smaller sounding chord. So you want to match uh, the, the uh, kind of weight of those chords if you can. But this is just as, uh, just as acceptable. If you're singing and you need to be able to pitch your notes against the chord, then that's valuable. That's a really valuable, still a valuable chord. But if we want to do this, play this chord like this, and stick the thumb over the top, then we get the Hendrix way of playing. Yeah? So you can get that there. That's a struggle for me. Yeah? And it might be a struggle for you. If it is, then there are lots of other methods. There's more than one way to skin a cat. So what I'm saying to you is if you have a big thumb, use it. Use that big thumb. Get it over the top to if you're holding notes down over here. If you're playing the C chord, maybe not such a good idea. It's useful for muting out strings that are unwanted. Yeah. But 
rule of thumb is it's another thing it's another thing that you can use to manipulate the strings and that's what it is it's it's contact with the strings that's important so so we've come from this approach going from a c chord oh, here we go c chord with the pinky on second finger down to a partial bar with the thumb over the top we can do that this is the easiest one i think you know no no fretting of bars at all you know just the four string version and what's beautiful about this is you can take this second finger off again and get this suspension here yeah, so, yeah. Um, so we've got this C, got the F, and then what happens is we get to the full-blown bar chord. Now, if I play this F shape here, and I take this first finger off, and I slide this shape down to the first fret, some of you may be able to identify that shape. That shape there is an E shape. And remember, when I mentioned the caged chords, the five chord shapes, C, A, G, E, D, E was one of the shapes. C, A, G, E, D. That's the right way around, hopefully. So, E shape. This is an E shape. So, if you take your E chord, how you know it or, or, already, this is another way to get to the F. We've got this E shape here. And what we're going to do is we're going to substitute the fingers. Now, you can see I've got my little finger free here right now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap my fingers around. So instead of using the first, second, and third fingers, the index, the middle, and the ring finger, I'm going to use my second, my third, and my fourth. So I'm going to use my middle, my ring, and my uh, pinky. Right? So if I switch those around, I'm still holding the same notes down in that fret. Yeah, I'm still holding those same notes down, uh, but I'm using different fingers to do the job. And that's this part of, the, uh, of uh, how uh, these, shape, these cage chords work. You're going to have to swap fingers around, get your head used to it, and also get your fingers used to how they, these work. Um, I'm going to just go off on a tangent here because it's important, for, especially for adult learners, um, to understand that your uh, neurological system, your the, the neurology in your body does not want to learn anything new because it sees it as a threat. Here's an exercise that I would like you to do. If you just do this, put your fingers, lock your fingers together like this, um, and you just feel how comfortable that feels. Just put your fingers together like that. And you've probably been doing this all your life, all your life. Yeah, uh, and it doesn't feel uncomfortable. Now, if I said to you to unlock your fingers and put them the other way around with the other thumb on top, you will notice in your hand it will feel very, very strange, very alien. Yeah, and if you unlock and go back to where it was the first time, you'll feel that that feels very, very comfortable. That feels really comfy, and if we go back to where it felt awkward, then you'll notice that awkward feeling, but it might be less awkward. And if you switch back and to the, uh, the mirror image uh, version of it, then as you switch between them, it should start to feel a little bit more normal and it won't feel so alien. And also the changeover will get quicker. Now what's actually happening is when you do this, your body is saying, this is a new pattern. I don't really like how that feels. Uh, so, you know, is it is it a threat? Is it dangerous? And then once it goes, no, it's not dangerous, It realize, your body realizes that it's in learning mode, then it happens super quick. Everything happens super, super quick. Going from that to that, yeah, you start to keep doing it, and it should feel a little bit easier every time and what we're looking for are incremental gains we want it to feel better a little by a uh, little by little better you're not looking for massive uh, changes you go mm, oh it feels weird and then you put it in you go oh yeah that is just normal now that's not going to happen yeah you could do the same thing if you fold your arms if you fold your arms 
uh, this is a this is a curious one. So fold your arms and then fold your arms the other way. Yeah, that feels really strange. <laughs> so if you fold your arms that way and then you fold your arms that way, you'll feel it feels really, really strange and alien. And that's what playing this chord and moving to another chord or playing a new shape is. That's what you're experiencing. You're experiencing the same programming aspect of telling your body what it needs to do in order to uh, accomplish playing chords. It's the same thing. So what you can do, knowing that information, is, do you know what? Cut yourself a bit of slack, yeah? It, it, you realise that you can learn how to play guitar. It is possible. You know, I don't know how many of you drive cars, but if you can drive a car, you can play guitar. It's as simple as that. I always say that if you can drive a car, you can play guitar. So do not give up. Understand that it is uh, it, it is your body that doesn't want to learn new patterns, uh, and it will uh, go, uh, <laughs> and, and you've got to stick with it. Yeah, and cut yourself some slack and realize that you're not going to get it straight away. It's little tiny steps, but as long as you're taking steps, you're going to get somewhere. If you stand still, you won't. So taking steps is important. Anyhow, back to this uh, F chord. So we, we can get to it from the C. Yeah, so we've got the C, pinky on, second finger down. We can apply the partial bar. We can apply the thumb. We can also play an E chord and we can substitute these fingers. Like I say here, uh, you can put the second, third, and fourth fingers on there. Now, here's the way to go with this. If we slide that shape up, then we get a chord that I call F ish. Now, the cool thing about this is we can play the E and slide the shape up. I get this F-ish. I'm going to call it F-ish. It's got a fancy name, but we're just going to call it F-ish because this exercise is something that I call Spanish-ish because it sounds Spanish-ish in a kind of a way. It's, it's actually sort of close. Uh, it's related to something called an Andalusian cadence. It sounds posh and uh, uh, quite probably quite uh, over the, the, the remit of what I'm trying to teach here. But there you go. <laughs> And what you'll hear is that they, 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 I've got this resolving sound here. That sounds like home. If I pull this up here, it's, this is a little bit hard on the ear. There's tension in it. Now what this does, this exercise gets you used to sliding that shape up. Because this is why, this is going to be important for when you want to move this shape and you want to keep on moving it. Further up the neck. Right? We want to use that and we want to move that chord, that shape up the neck. But you can see it's still the E chord. It's still at its core an E shape. Now, if I take that E shape and I move it up to my F ish, what I call the F ish, um, and put my first finger over that first fret then what happens is this first finger basically takes the place of the head nut here and becomes this uh, this becomes the starting point of the guitar if you remember from the last uh, um, facebook live i did here with this that th basically each of these fret wires becomes a new head nut when we press just behind them so that's what's actually happening there so we can put the e shape on Slide it up and then put the bar on and give that a squeeze. Yeah. Now, the rule with the thumb, I think, is that the thumb wants to be a kind of, hang on, I'm, I'm struggling to get that out there, kind of at 12 o'clock pointing up, 11 o'clock will be okay. But if you end up doing something like that, 9 o'clock, you will get no grip. You will have no purchase. It's just pure and simple leverage and physics. Yeah, so you need to be able to make sure that you get that that over there. Also, with this bar, I tend to uh, use the inside of this part of the finger here, where we avoid the creases that the strings can disappear in and become muted. 
So if we use the side of the index finger, yeah, instead of the flat of this index finger where the fingerprint is, the distal phalanx, and these three segments here, you avoid it by just using this inside part here. Now I put that shape on and I put my bar on, you can see, you see there, I'm using that portion of the finger. If you try and put it flat on like that, it will kink your elbow out, kink your shoulder out, you create tension, when I talked about tension before, it's not a good thing. So we wanna get that shape there, nice and relaxed. And remember, if it's nice and relaxed, look, if I take my hand away, do you remember we're talking about sleeping hand? Look at how relaxed that, that my hand isn't contorting into any insane shape here at all. Yeah, so putting that cord on there. And this then becomes a movable shape. Again, just like we did before with this, this is, this is the F to a G. This is an F, this is a G. All right, and I just compare the chords just so that I can convince you because you need convincing. There's a G. There's a G. So you can see I end up with two ways to play that chord in that position there. Okay. So one of the things as well that I think I've got to address is. When it comes to playing the F chord, it becomes this thing that I call uh, uh, the visual versus the actual. What you need to do is to build a little movie in your mind of how you build these chords and how you build a chord uh, is a step-by-step -step process. It should be a step-by-step -step process. Um, but building a bar chord kind of makes sense that you work on the e string for your for your notes if this is the e string this is the e here behind the zero frets think of a zero fret this is the first fret and this note here is f at the first fret now i'm going to avoid sharps and flats if i move up to the third fret this is g if i move up to the fifth fret that's a if i move to the seventh fret that's b if i move to the eighth fret that's c if I move to the 10th fret, that's D. And then if I get to the double dots, I'm back to E again. Worth checking out on my YouTube channel all the videos I have about understanding your fretboard. Because if you don't understand your fretboard, you will be lost. Yeah, because there's, there, there is a geometry and there's an underlying uh, um, elegant framework to the fretboard that if you don't understand, you can't unlock it. It's like you need to have the map in your head. So essentially, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. You can see there, I can, I can get a whole bunch of chords potentially with that using this um, shape. So if I put my E shape back on there and I move it to the first fret, you can see that gives me an F. If I move it to the third fret, because my root note is here, by the way, this is an E chord. And it should be easy to remember where the root note is because it's on the E string. It's just on this string here. So there's the E shape. Move it up one fret, you get the F. Move it up another, you get the G. Move it up another, you get the A. So I'm at the fifth fret here. I'm missing out this pesky sharp here. Uh, move it up uh, to the seventh fret. I get a B chord. So I get a B chord there. Uh, I move it up another fret and that, uh, to the eighth fret. That gives me the C chord. Up to the tenth fret, that gives me uh, the D chord. Now, what's happening is, as I move up towards here, that curved finger starts to flatten round as I move move around. I'm on the side of the finger, but as I move up, my finger flattens out. But that's okay because the frets are quite wide here. But as you move up, they get uh, um, thinner. They get the width uh, uh, gets smaller, so we can actually hold things just a little bit easier. We've got the F chord here. Um, and that is the way we're going to, we, we can build this thing. Now, going back to what I mentioned about vi visual uh, and versus actual. The visual way of building a bar chord, and this is the way that most people learn bar chords, is to find the root note, apply the bar across it, and then put the shape on. But what happens there is we don't take into account 
the way that our ligaments and our fingers work. Remember what I said in the first uh, workshop and the first uh, Facebook Live that I did there, that if you, if you just do this here and you feel in between here how the ligaments rub, you've got a ligament rub in between there, right? So because you've got that ligament rub, yeah, when you put a bar cord on, you go, if you put this on like this, you're going to activate that ligament rub and it's going to feel uncomfortable. There is a better way. And you've got to understand that this finger is called the middle finger for a reason. It's the middle digit. And this is the longest finger. And it's, the, it's, a, it's a good probe finger. It's a good scouting finger. Because you have when you play chords, you have a scouting finger, finger that lands first, goes ahead. Um, so this second finger, what we want to do is I'm going to play this F chord again. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to scout that second finger because I want to get this F-ish chord. And then I want to put my second, my third and fourth on and then put the bar on last. But convention says that what you do is you find the note, you bar across and then you put the shape on. Yeah. Now, what that happens is to beginners, that's super, super uncomfortable. And um, pretty much it's, it's not ergonomic in how you might change to other chords either. So really what we want to do instead of going from this visual approach where you would find the F, apply the bar, and then apply the shape, which is an E shape. Instead of doing that, what we're going to do is we're going to start on a separate, a different finger sequence. So we go second finger, all right? Now, if that feels awkward, take that, pair it right back and just do this, practice it, getting the second finger on the G string, second fret. When you get it there, say, is it in the right spot? Yeah, it is. Okay, right, take my hand off and do that. Repeat that, take it off. Do that, repeat that, take it off. Put it back on, take it off, put it back on. And what you're doing is you're doing the same thing as this. It feels odd at first. And you don't get that confirmation of how it feels, yeah, because the kinesthetic is where we're all starting from, yeah. It's about how it feels at first. Guitar's all always about how it feels, um, uh, and programming your fingers to do it by muscle memory. So we need that feedback. So second finger on, and then notice these third and fourth. Well, what we've got is we've got two of these ligaments. These two fingers are now acting as one. So instead of where we had before, we had that pinky pulling down on the third finger in the first Facebook Live I did, we end up using them both together, and it's much easier. Use those ligaments, let them work together. So second finger goes on there, and then the third and fourth goes on there to help you to make that E shape. Yeah, You could practice it in the E position if you want, just to get, get it uh, the, the kinesthetic, how it feels. Confirmed, second, third and fourth. Take your hand off. Second, third and fourth. Second, third and fourth. And then slide it up and then put your bar on. That gives you the pesky F chord. It's a much easier and it's a much simpler way to play the F chord as a bar chord. Yeah, so this is a real sticking point for beginner uh, it's moving up into intermediate guitar um you know it's it's a tricky proposition sometimes fearful unnecessarily so that the f chord is going to be one of those things that it's a battle there is a landscape as well i find to learning chords uh, that you know um your expectations uh, when you hit the f chord it it, it feels that all the chords that you're going to learn from that point onwards are going to be hard you know but realistically the bar chords are about as hard as it gets for your hands until you start getting into extended chord shapes that might span like five frets or something like that um which uh, by the time you get to those uh, kind of chords you you you're up in the upper echelons of of jazz or something like that so so i wouldn't really worry about it too much um so the bar chords are pretty much as hard as it's going to get, and then you plateau after that. And you, once you've normalised those techniques, then you, you know the, the the bar chords, you're golden. So 
F chord. We've got a few different approaches now. So we can go a C chord. We can put that pinky on, drop the second finger, use just the four strings. No E strings involved there. We can partial bar the, sec the first finger across the thin E string. So we can get that in there. We can play it as what I call a semi-skimmed version. There's the semi-skimmed version. And the full fat version is the full bar chord. We'll play that. If we have these big massive tendril-like thumbs that you can stick over the top like Jimi Hendrix and Stevie Ray Vaughan and those guys uh, uh, had, then do it if you can, uh, but don't discount all of these methods, you know, use them all, utilize them all. So there's the uh, uh, semi-skimmed with the thumb over the top. And then we have the bar chord, the full bar chord, which we do by going finger two, scouting with the second finger, then the third and fourth finger, then the first finger bars across the first fret. This becomes now a movable shape that we can use to play other chords. Do we have to bar the high two strings in playing an F, or can we leave the high E in the first three? Can uh, Sama, uh, do we have to bar the high the high two strings in playing F open? Or can we leave? You can leave the high E. You can leave the high E out of the equation. This is what I was showing you here. This is what I was saying. Uh, with this this shape here, this grip here, I'm just playing the A string, the D string, the G string, and the B string. I'm muting out that note there. You don't have to play it, right? If you do, it's more desirable. Because it's a root note. Because any any anything that happens on this thick E string is going to be mirrored on this thin E string also. This is an E, and this is an F. This is an E, and this is an F. So we get exactly the, the same note name. Yeah. And it's important to if you can get that, then it's it's just uh, another way to do it. It's the more ways you can do something, the more flexibility you have. We want to be economical. So listen to this. No worries. F, G. Watch this. Can you really hear much of a difference in sound? If you're singing over the top of that, you know, while uh, your fans are screaming at you uh, on stage, um, Does that matter, really? So you can hear those three chords there. Ooh. Right. So. so what I could do is I can use that idea there to help me to uh, play the, that three chord trick. You know, this to show you that you do not need to learn bar chords to play songs. You do not. And I hope that you try everything that I've shown you today because if it's all well thinking it, but if you don't do it, it's as it's as much as thinking it really you know you've got to do it if you if you're going to do it do it okay guys take care bye